80. And these signs are sufficient to prove that the face of Christ alone is a true religion. But see, you still do not believe and are seeking for arguments. We, however, make our proof not in the persuasive words of Greek wisdom, as our teacher has it, but we persuade by the face, which manifestly precedes argumentative proof. Behold, there are here some vexed with demons. Now there were certain who had come to him, very disquieted by demons, and bringing them into the mists, he said, Do you cleanse them, either by arguments, and by whatever art or magic you choose, calling upon your idols? Or if you are unable, put away your strife with us, and you shall see the power of the cross of Christ. And having said this, he called upon Christ, and signed the sufferers two or three times, with the sign of the cross. And immediately the men stood up whole, and in their right mind, and forthwith gave thanks unto the Lord. And the philosophers, as they are called, wondered and were astonished, exceedingly by the understanding of the man and at the sign which had been wrought. But Anthony said, Why marvel ye at this? We are not the doers of these things, but it is Christ who worketh them by means of those who believe in him. Believe therefore also yourselves, and you shall see that with us there is no trick of words, but faith through love which is wrought in us towards Christ which if you yourselves should obtain, you will no longer seek demonstrative arguments, but will consider faith in Christ sufficient. These are the words of Anthony. And they, marveling at this also, saluted him and departed, confessing the benefit they had received from him. 81. And the fame of Anthony came even unto kings, for Constantine Augustus and his sons, Constantius and Constans, the Augusti, wrote letters to him, as to a father, and begged an answer from him, but he made nothing very much of the letters, nor did he rejoice at the messages, but was the same as he had been before the emperors wrote to him. But when they brought him the letters, he called the monks and said, Do not be astonished if an emperor writes to us, for he is a man, but rather wonder that God wrote the law for men and has spoken to us through his own son. And so he was unwilling to receive the letters saying that he did not know how to write an answer to such things. But being urged by the monks, because the emperors were Christian, unless they should take offense on the ground that they had been spurned, he consented that they should be read, and wrote an answer approving them because they worship Christ, and giving them counsel on things pertaining to salvation, not to think much of the present, but rather to remember the judgment that is coming, and to know that Christ alone was the true and eternal King. He begged them to be merciful, and to give heed to justice and the poor, and they having received the answer rejoiced. Thus he was dear to all, and all desired to consider him as a father. 82. Being known to be so great a man, therefore, and having thus given answers to those who visited him, he returned again to the inner mountain, and maintained his wonted discipline. And often when people came to him, as he was sitting or walking, as it is written in Daniel, he became dumb, and after a season, he resumed the thread of what he had been saying before to the brethren who were with him. And his companions perceived that he was seeing a vision, for often when he was on the mountains, he saw what was happening in Egypt, and told it to Serapion the bishop, who was indoors with him, and who saw that Anthony was wrapped in a vision. Once he was sitting and working, he fell, as it were, into a trance, and groaned much at what he saw. Then after a time, having turned to the bystanders with groans and trembling, he prayed, and falling on his knees remained so a long time. And having arisen, the old man wept. His companions, therefore, trembling and terrified, desired to learn from him what it was. And they troubled him much, until he was forced to speak. And with many groans he spoke as follows, O my children, it were better to die, before what has appeared in the vision come to pass. And when again they asked him, having burst into tears, he said, Grass is about to seize the church, and it is at the point of being given up to men who are like senseless beasts. For I saw the table of the Lord's house, and mules standing around it on all sides in a ring, and kicking the things therein, just like a herd kicks when it leaps in confusion. And you saw, said he, how I go on, for I heard a voice saying, My altar shall be defiled. These things the old man saw. And after two years, the present inroad of the Arians and the plunder of the church took place, when they violently carried off the vessels and made the heathen carry them. 
and when they forced the heathen from the prisons to join in the services, and in their presence did upon the table as they would. Then we all understood that these kicks of the mules signified to Anthony what the Aryans senselessly, like beasts, are now doing. But when he saw the vision, he comforted those with him, saying, Be not downcast, my children, for as the Lord has been angry, so again will he heal us, and the church shall soon again receive her own order, and shall shine forth, as she is wont, and you shall behold the persecuted restored, and wickedness again was drawn to its own hiding place. And pious face, speaking boldly in every place, was all freedom. Only defile not yourselves with the Arians, for their teaching is not that of the apostles, but that of demons, and their father the devil, yea rather it is barren and senseless, and without light understanding like the senselessness of these mules. 83. Such are the words of Anthony, and we ought not to doubt whether such marvels were wrought by the hand of a man. For it is the promise of the Saviour, when he says, If ye have face as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Remove hence, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, If ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Ask, and ye shall receive. And he himself, it is who says to his disciples, and to all who believe on him, Heal the sick, cast out demons, Freely ye have received, freely give. 84. Anthony at any rate healed not by commanding, but by prayer and speaking the name of Christ, so that it was clear to all that it was not he himself who worked, but the Lord who showed mercy by his means and healed the sufferers. But Anthony's part was only prayer and discipline, for the sake of which he stayed in the mountain, rejoicing in the contemplation of divine things, but grieving when troubled by much people, and dragged to the outer mountain, for all judges used to ask him to come down, because it was impossible for them to enter on account of their following of litigants. But nevertheless they asked him to come, that they might but see him. When therefore he avoided it and refused to go to them, they remained firm, and sent to him all the more the prisoners under charge of soldiers, that on account of these he might come down, being forced by necessity. And seeing them lamenting, he came into the outer mountain, and again his labor was not unprofitable, for his coming was advantageous and serviceable to many, and he was of profit to the judges, counseling them to prefer justice to all things, to fear God, and to know that with what judgment they judged they should be judged. But he loved more than all things his sojourn into the mountain. 85. At another time, suffering the same compulsion at the hands of them who had need, and after many entreaties, from the commander of the soldiers, he came down, and when he was come, he spoke to them shortly of the things which make for salvation, and concerning those who wanted him, and was hastening away. But when the duke, as he is called, entreated him to stay, he replied that he could not linger among them, and persuaded him by pretty simil, saying, Fishes, if they remain long on dry land, die, and so monks lose their strength if they loiter among you, and spend their time with you. Wherefore, as fish must hurry to the sea, so must we hasten to the mountain, lest haply, if we delay, we forget the things within us. And the general, having heard this and many other things from him, was amazed and said, Of a trust this man is a servant of God, for unless he were beloved of God, whence could an ignorant man have such great understanding? 86. And a certain general, Balakius by name, persecuted us Christians bitterly on account of his regard for the Arians, that name of ill omen and his ruthlessness was so great, that he beat virgins, and stripped and scourged monks. Anthony at this time wrote a letter as follows, and sent it to him, I see wrath coming upon thee, wherefore, cease to persecute the Christians, lest haply wrath catch hold of thee, and even now it is on the point of coming upon thee. But Balakius laughed, and threw the letter on the ground, and spit on it, and insulted the bearers, bidding them tell this to Anthony, Since thou takest thought for the monk, soon I will come after thee also. And five days had not passed before Ras came upon him. For Balakius and Nestorius, the perfect of Egypt, went forth to the first halting place from Alexandria, which is called Shiro, and both were on the horseback, and the horses belonged to Balakius, and were the quietest of all his stable. 
but they had not gone far towards the palace when the horses began to frisk with one another, as they are wont to do. And suddenly the quieter on which Nestorius sat, with a bite dismounted Balacius and attacked him, and tore his thigh so badly with its teeth that he was borne straight back to the city, and in three days died. And all wondered because what Antony had foretold had been so speedily fulfilled. 87. Thus, therefore, he warned the crew, but the rest who came to him, he so instructed that they straightway forget their lawsuits, and felicitated those who were in retirement from the world, and he championed those who were wrong in such a way that you would imagine that he, not the others, was a sufferer. Further, he was able to be of such use to all that many soldiers and men who had great possessions laid aside the burdens of life and became monks for the rest of their days. And it was as if a physician had been given by God to Egypt. For who in grief met Antony and did not return rejoicing? Who came mourning for his dead and did not forthwith put off his sorrow? Who came in anger and was not converted to friendship? What poor and low-spirited man met him? who, hearing him and looking upon him, did not despise wealth and console himself in his poverty. What monk, having been neglectful, came to him and became not all the stronger? What young man, having come to the mountain and seen Anthony, did not forthwith deny himself pleasure and love temperance? Who, when tempted by a demon, came to him and did not find rest? And who came troubled with doubts and did not get quietness of mind? 88. For this was the wonderful thing in Anthony's discipline, that, as I said before, having the gift of discerning spirits, he recognized their movements, and was not ignorant whether any of them turned his energy and made his attack. And not only was he not deceived by them himself, but cheering those who were troubled with doubts, he taught them how to defeat their plans, telling them of the weakness and craft of those who possessed them. Thus each one, as though prepared by him for battle, came down from the mountain, braving the designs of the devil and his demons. How many maidens who had suitors, having but seen Anthony from afar, remained maidens for Christ's sake? And people came also from foreign parts to him, and like all others, having got some benefit returned, as though set forward by a father. And certainly when he died, all as having been bereft of a father, consoled themselves solely by the remembrances of him, preserving at the same time his counsel and advice. 89. It is worse while that I should relate, and that you, as you wish, should hear what his death was like, for this end of his is worthy of imitation. According to his custom, he visited the monks in the outer mountain, and having learned from Providence that his own end was at hand, he said to the brethren, This is my last visit to you which I shall make and I shall be surprised if we see each other again in this life. At length the time of my departure is at hand, for I am near a hundred and five years old. And when they heard it, they wept and embraced, and kissed the old man. But he, as though sailing from a foreign city to his own, spoke joyously, and exhorted them, not to grow idle in their labors, nor to become faint in their training, but to live as though dying daily. And as he had said before, zealously to guard the soul from foul thoughts, eagerly to imitate the saints, and to have not to do with malicious schismatics, for you know their wicked and profane character, nor have any fellowship with the Arians, for the impiety is clear to all, nor be disturbed if you see the judges protect them, for it shall cease, for their pomp is mortal and of short duration. Wherefore, keep yourselves all the more untainted by them, and observe the traditions of the fathers, and chiefly, the holy face in our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have learned from the scripture, and of which you have often been put in mind by me. 90. But when the brethren were urging him to abide with them, and there to die, he suffered, it not for many reasons, as he showed by keeping silence, and especially for this. The Egyptians are wont to honor with funeral rites, and to wrap in linen clothes at death, the body of good men, and especially of the holy martyrs and not to bury them underground, but to place them on couches and to keep them in their houses, thinking in this to honor the departed. And Anthony often urged the bishops to give commandment to the people on this matter. In like manner, he taught the laity and reproved the women, saying that this thing was neither lawful nor holy at all, for the bodies of the patriarchs and prophets are until now preserved in tombs, 
And the very body of the Lord was laid in a tomb, and a stone was laid upon it, and hid it until he rose on the third day. And thus saying, he showed that he who did not bury the bodies of the dead after death transgressed the law, even though they were sacred. For what is greater or more sacred than the body of the Lord? Many therefore, having heard, henceforth buried the dead underground, and gave thanks to the Lord that they had been taught rightly. 91. But he, knowing the custom, and fearing that his body would be treated this way, hastened, and having bidden farewell to the monks in the outer mountain, entered the inner mountain, where he was accustomed to abide. And after a few months he fell sick. Having summoned those who were there, they were two in number who had remained in the mountain fifteen years, practicing the discipline, and attending on Anthony on account of his age. He said to them, I, as it is written, go the way of the fathers, for I perceive that I am called by the Lord. And do you be watchful and destroy not your long discipline, but as though now making a beginning, zealously preserve your determination, for ye know the treachery of the demons, how fierce they are, but how little power they have. Wherefore, fear them not, but rather, ever breathe Christ and trust him. Live as though dying daily, give heed to yourselves, and remember the admonition you have heard from me. Have no fellowship with the schismatics, nor any dealings at all with the heretical Arians, for you know how I shunned them on account of their hostility to Christ, and the strange doctrines of their heresy. Therefore, be the more earnest always to be followers first of God and then of the saints that after death they also may receive you as well-known friends into the eternal habitations. Ponder over these things and think of them, and if you have any care for me, and are mindful of me as of a father, suffer no one to take my body into Egypt, lest haply they place me in the houses. For to avoid this I entered into the mountain and came here. Moreover, you know how I always put to rebuke those who had this custom, and exhorted them to cease from it. Bury my body, therefore, and hide it underground yourselves, and let my words be observed by you, that no one may know the place but you alone. For at the resurrection of the dead I shall receive it incorruptible from the Saviour, and divide my garments. To Athanasius the bishop, give one sheepskin, and the garment whereon I am laid, which he himself gave me new, but which with me has grown old. To Serapion the bishop, give the other sheepskin, and keep the hair garments yourself. For the rest fare ye well, my children, for Anthony is departing, and is with you no more. 92. Having said this, when they had kissed him, he lifted up his feet, and as though he saw friends coming to him, and was glad because of them. For as he lay his countenance appeared joyful. He died, and was gathered to the fathers. And they afterward, according to his commandment, wrapped him up and buried him hiding his body underground, and no one knows to this day where it was buried, save those two only. But each of those who received the sheepskin of the blessed Anthony, and the garment worn by him, guards it as a precious treasure. For even to look on them is as it were to behold Anthony, and he who is clothed in them seems with joy to bear his admonitions. 93. This is the end of Anthony's life in the body and the above was the beginning of the discipline. Even if this account is small compared with his merit, still from this reflect how great Anthony, the man of God, was, who from his youth to so great an age preserved a uniform zeal for the discipline, and neither through old age was subdued by the desire of costly food, nor through the infirmity of his body changed the fashion of his clothing, nor washed even his feet with water, and yet remained entirely free from harm, for his eyes were undimmed, and quite sound, and he saw clearly. Of his teeth he had not lost one, but they had become worn to the gums, through the great age of the old man. He remained strong both in hands and feet, and while all men were using various foods and washings and divers garments, he appeared more cheerful and of greater strength, and the fact that his fame has been blazoned everywhere, that all regard him was wonder, and that those who have never seen him long for him, is clear proof of his virtue and God's love of his soul. For not from writings, nor from worldly wisdom, nor through any art was Anthony renowned, but solely from his piety towards God. That this was the gift of God no one will deny. For from whence into Spain and into Gaul, how into Rome and Africa, 
was a man heard of who abode hidden in a mountain, unless it was God who maketh his own known everywhere, who also promises to Anthony at the beginning. For even if they work secretly, even if they wish to remain in obscurity, yet the Lord shows them as lambs to lighten all, that those who hear may thus know that the precepts of God are able to make men prosper, and thus be zealous in the path of virtue. 94. Read these words, therefore, to the rest of the brethren, that they may learn what the life of monks ought to be, and may believe that our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ glorifies those who glorify Him, and leads those who serve Him unto the end, not only to the kingdom of heaven, but here also, even though they hide themselves, and are desirous of withdrawing from the world, makes them illustrious and well known everywhere on account of their virtue and the help they render others. And if need be, read this among the heathen, that even in this way they may learn that our Lord Jesus Christ is not only God and Son of God, but also that the Christians who truly serve Him and religiously believe on Him prove not only that the demons whom the Greeks themselves think to be gods are no gods, but also tread them on their foot and put them to flight, as deceivers and corruptors of mankind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.